Right, Chelsea lose 2-1 to Real Madrid last night in the last game of our pre-season tour of America. I am now back in the UK. I was absolutely fighting through the jet lag last night to stay up and to watch the game, which I did do, but ultimately... I might as well have just gone to sleep and watched it the next morning because there wasn't really anything in that game to give me huge amounts of excitement or confidence going into this Premier League season. But like always, I will try to highlight the positives from that game in this video. But before we get into all that, people, welcome back to the Joey Knight podcast. If you are new around here at the end of the video, if you like the content and you want to see more from myself, please do hit the subscribe button. One big push could be all that it takes. One good performing video where a lot of you guys subscribe could take me to 100,000 subscribers. I'm getting ready for that little silver plaque. You can see I've actually moved the TV in the background over to the side. I'm going to get some stuff going on here. That's why you can see some holes in the walls, but I'm visually going to try and improve the experience, the viewing experience for you guys. So I'm doing my bit my end. You do your bit your end by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Let's get into the game. So on screen now, you can see the starting lineup that Enzo Maresca went with. I was very happy to see Jorgensen in goal over Robert Sanchez. I've spoke time in, time out about how I feel like we need to be giving Jorgensen these minutes so we can see how he fares. Reese James in the back three with Levi Colwell, who was more in the middle. Ben Wabadi Ashil. Now, the graphic that you would have seen if you were watching and you were looking at the various websites that give the lineups would have been a four at the back with Melo Gusto in there in the left back position. But this is how I saw it play out on the pitch. I had Melo Gusto paired with Romeo Lavia, a man that has impressed me massively during preseason. Christopher Nkunku slightly ahead of him. Enzo Fernandez also slightly ahead, but maybe a little bit further behind in terms of the actual heat map, in terms of the player position averages than in Kunku was. And then out wide, we had Sterling and Madawaki, who have undoubtedly been our best wide options in preseason. Mark Gu in the middle, coming up against a former rival in Real Madrid. Obviously, he came through the Barcelona Academy. No Caicedo in this one. He did come on off the bench late on. Let's get into the match itself. Now, I thought in the first 10 minutes or so, we actually started the game way better than we did against Manchester City. We looked a little bit more composed, a little bit more assured on the ball, and we did start to create chances early on. Three minutes in, Sterling receives the ball on the left-hand side, shows some real class to manoeuvre his way through some tight spaces and eventually finds himself in a position to almost be able to chip the ball over the top to Christopher Nkunku, who was on the other side of the edge of the area. Nkunku takes it down, does well in doing so, and then he puts the ball over the top into the box. But the man whose head it meets is unfortunately Raheem Sterling. Now, I would not have put much money at all on Sterling to be able to convert the half volley, or the full volley, I should say, against Manchester City on his weaker foot. And I definitely wouldn't have put much money on on Raheem Sterling to be able to convert a header against Thibaut Courtois. That is a very tough task to do. Sterling ended up not being able to even hit the target with that one, but the warning signs were there. We were showing that this Chelsea side can very much create opportunities for ourselves, even when we're playing against the higher level teams like Madrid, like Man City. However, that encouragement that I was feeling early on is always dampened when we go from seeing some of the best that this Enzo Maresca Chelsea side can play to some of the worst that this Enzo Maresca Chelsea side has to offer. Because after some early promise, some of the old mistakes that have reared their ugly head constantly throughout this preseason started to occur. And it really, really is 50-50 at the moment when it comes to the mistakes and the defensive vulnerabilities that we're seeing a lot of the time from Chelsea Football Club. And ultimately, it may well just come down to the personnel that we are seeing on the field. 50% of the time, we will pick up the ball in the midfield with those two sort of deep-lying midfield players. And 50% of the time, 
If you say Romeo Lavia, for example, he might be able to take the ball on the turn to beat a man, to take a man out of the game, and then quickly progress the ball and start a counter-attack, which I've already worked out. This Chelsea team are very good when it comes to counter-attacking. However, that may well be a problem going into the Premier League season when ultimately teams will just sit back and play that low block against us like they did last season and like they had so much success with last season. But in the times when a Romeo Lavia, for example, isn't able to beat a man and to inspire an attack, we are way too easy to be dispossessed in the middle of the park and also in defence. And when we are dispossessed, at the moment, these tactics of playing a high line, which I will get back to later on in this video, become significantly exposed. We're often beat for pace in behind or there's just no actual understanding amongst the defence and it was showcased in the moments that follow. And notice how I mentioned the personnel here because when we talk about this high line that we're playing, we are playing a high line that for the most part in pre-season has involved tossing out of bio, good player, good recovery pace. However, apart from him, it's involving Benoit Badiashil who hasn't really showed very good pace. Levi Colwell, who obviously is a really good defender, but again, I wouldn't say is the quickest defender. And then you've got Wesley Fofana and Reese James, who are both coming back from injury nightmares last season. So I don't think that we've had a fair opportunity to be able to bring in players that are firing on all cylinders, fit and available, and then are able to make the hard adaptation to playing this high line style. But again, it's not just the high line, it's the understanding amongst the defence. You know, there was a moment in the 16th minute when Reese James and then Colwell have a complete mix up in the box and it comes so close to gifting Real Madrid an early goal that it's just another one of those moments you have to look at and think what is going on here what has happened to football to use a phrase that I've heard so many times on social media the game's gone because if in doubt put it out. I know that might be simple man's logic, but it's logic that I think applies here, and we don't do that. There's four Real Madrid players in the box and counting. There's a fifth directly on the edge of the box. Rhys James has somewhat of a mix-up with his feet, and instead of just putting the laces through it and getting the ball up the pitch, understanding we're probably going to give away possession, but we're going to give away possession in a less vulnerable position to us, Rhys James then tries to pass it on to Levi Colwell. He doesn't get anything on the ball to be able to clear it out and then Real Madrid are gifted an opportunity. We were very lucky that they didn't take the opportunity just then but ultimately moments later they would because then it is the high land that exposed. Real Madrid slip a lovely ball through the attacker gets goal side of Benoit Badiashil. To be fair to Badiashil, he does actually get back and make up ground but by that point they've just got too much quality too high up the pitch. The, bear, the ball sorry, is squared along the box and it ends up being Lucas Vazquez the fullback who opens the scoring for Real Madrid. Within minutes Brahim Diaz catches the Chelsea defence in behind once again, this time not only getting goal side of Rhys James, but he also manages to round Jorgensen. Now, I do feel like Jorgensen could probably do a little bit better in that moment, but then to play devil's advocate, what Jorgensen does do well is he pushes him so far to the touchline that it doesn't make the angle impossible, but it makes it a hard one to score. However, Diaz does get the shot on target. Now, when I was watching it back, I also had to look at Benoit Badiashil and think, could you have done better? Could you have rushed in quicker to get a goal line clearance there? I do think he could have, man. I really do think he could have. I don't think we can be too harsh on him. And I spoke before in videos about not comparing the Chelsea of new to the Chelsea of old, but I'm telling you now, JT, whether pre-season friendly or not, will put his body on the line to try and make sure that ball does not go into the net. We can't say the same for Badi Ashil. Didn't really surprise me at this point to be 2-0 down. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. Chelsea do still have a little bit of control in the match after this point. The problem is, with Chelsea, right, it's like when we lose that control, we are not quick to get it back. And we come under sustained periods, sometimes 5, 10, 15 minutes, where we just 
just being ripped to shreds. And when we weather the storm, and when we get through those periods, we do then eventually gain some control again. But sometimes the damage has been done in those periods. And like it was here, the two goals were scored, the damage was done. But we did start to get a grip of the game a little bit more after that point. Good little moments from Sterling, from Nkunku. But on the 35th minute mark, Enzo Fernandez produced a real moment of quality that will be brilliant for his confidence after a turbulent few weeks and will be brilliant for the Chelsea fans to see because when we brought Enzo Fernandez in, it was exactly what we wanted to see from him. He got the ball on the edge of the box, takes one little look up and loops over a perfectly weighted ball which meets the head of another star boy from preseason, another man that is impressed really, really well and has definitely forced his way into Enzo Maresca's plans if he wasn't there already. Ready, and that is Noni Madawaki. He manages to convert the header past Thibaut Courtois. So going into half time at 2 1, I'm not going to say I was confident. I wasn't confident before the match started against Real Madrid, but there was hope there. There was a reason for me to fight the jet lag and to stay up and watch the second half, but ultimately, I may as well not have done. There wasn't really much to talk about at all in the second half was there. There was the moment when Nkunku went through on goal. I think it was Raheem Sterling that he linked up well with. He obviously drew the save from Lunin. But apart from that, we didn't create too much else. To be fair, neither did Madrid. So I think it's safe to say all in all, the key moments pretty much all happened within that first 45 minutes. But anyway, let's get into some takeaways from this game. At the moment, right now, the high line is just not working. The high line... May work for Ange Postacoglu, but it's not working for Chelsea Football Club at the moment. But please don't make the mistake of thinking, ah, oh, well, you know, it's Man City, it's Real Madrid. Of course, they're going to be able to expose our high line. Any team like that will be able to. Mate, don't make that mistake. I'm telling you now. Any Premier League team, uh, Nottingham Forest, for example, right? Nottingham Forest. If they pick up the ball in the middle with Morgan Gibbs-White, believe me, he can spray something on to Alanga, to Callum hudson Odoi, and those same vulnerabilities will be exposed by a mid-table and even relegation-battled Premier League teams if we do not sort it out in time. Now... It's very interesting because after the game, Enzo Maresca said that we are not working on specifically having the line so high. It's more of a defensive habit from last year. Now, I feel like we've got to take those comments with a little bit of a pinch of salt. It's very clear that the managerial instruction is to play out from the back. Whether the line being so high or not is a hangover from the Pochettino era, I'm really not sure. But what Enzo Maresca needs to make sure is that he is able to get a clear message over to the boys to then tell them to drop back a little bit potentially because Real Madrid were beating us in behind time in time out again last night and it will happen again as we go into the Premier League season. I've spoke about the fact that players are coming back from the injury and maybe that will make this adaptation period harder. Maybe we'll see a little bit better when De Sassi comes back into the team, you know. Although I've spoke about the fact that I feel he was overpriced and obviously underwhelmed a little bit last season. Let's remember the man we played against last night Antonio Rudiger, he did not come in and light the Premier League up in his first season. But by his second season, he was playing some really, really good football. And I always say a defence is what you make of it. Enzo Maresca needs to show his quality here. And he needs to be able to coach some stability, some solidity and some confidence into this defence. But... I don't really see the tactics changing all that much. And I also don't feel that if the tactics don't change, there's really much we can do to combat the fact that we are so easy to cut through. Unless it comes to bringing in some other players. And I know you lot will blow the lid when I say that because you'll think, oh my God, how many other players do you want to bring in? I think in Tosin Adarabaya, we have a man that will adapt quite well to the system. The jury's out on Wesley Fofana. Reese James, I want to go easy on him, but let's be honest, he's not having the best preseason so far. Um, I think it's harsh to judge him on how he comes up against Vinicius Jr. because that is obviously a tough, tough task. But being the captain, he will need to adapt quickly to this system and obviously he's going to be missing the first few games isn't he because of that red card he picked up early on uh, or I should say late on last season so 
think he misses the first two games. If he doesn't get fit and available and ready for that third game, he could well see his minutes limited because he could well see a tossing at a bio, for example, come in there and take some of those minutes off of him, even an Axel de Sassi. One man we are missing massively, and I'm going to bang the drum here again. It's not the sentimental drum. I am speaking facts here. Trevor Chalabar. He's played in the back three multiple times. He instills a composure along that back line, a reassurance along that back line. I think he's organizing, his organization, so I should say, of the back line is very, very good. And I really, really do think we're missing Trevor Chalabar. I would love the board to make a U-turn on this one. We know Conor Gallagher's going, but if we could keep Trevor Chalaba right now, I think it would be more important, you know? You've heard my disdain at the way that Conor Gallagher's been treated and the way that Conor Gallagher's been moved on, the fact he was told he was training with the kids, even Trevor Chalaba playing for the under-21s. It is ridiculous. However... I am going to put my neck out on the line here and possibly end up upsetting a few of you in saying as much as I would love Conor Gallagher to stay, I do feel like we've got other options there that may be just as good as Conor Gallagher at times, okay? Not on the performances last season, he was the man last season, but going forward, if we're to have a good season, I think that Conor Gallagher might not be the biggest miss ever other than the fact that we do love him. He's a boy of blue and we want him to stay. Trevor Chalabar is a miss. Trevor Chalabar right now is the best performing centre-back at Chelsea Football Club for me. I would say that the best centre-back at the club is probably Levi Colwell, but on performances at the moment, from what we saw of Trevor Chalabar at the end of last season, he is the best performing centre-back at Chelsea Football Club at the moment. So as much as the ownership can come out and say, oh, well, it's not just a policy. Look at what we're doing with Reese James and Levi Colwell. We're not looking to sell them. Well, yeah, OK, but you should also be doing the same with Trevor Chalabar. So I don't know. I don't know. I think that the team are really struggling to get used to this system. The Inter Milan match will be... The last chance we get to see, is he going to rotate? Is Enzo Maresca going to adapt and going to do an almost Conte-style change where he comes in and decides that his initial plans weren't really working? Or will he stick with what he's been doing? And maybe when the intensity of the Premier League comes back and people are switched right on, maybe it'll work well for him. Maybe it won't all be doom and gloom. But to counter the fact that I don't feel that the defensive boys are getting the system, there are players who will be flying home on the plane back to the UK today who are very much understanding the system. And I would say to an extent are thriving in the system. Christopher Nkunku has probably, alongside Romeo Lavia, been our standout player of pre-season if we can keep those two boys fit I've said it time in time out it will be like new signings Noni Madueke has impressed me he's definitely impressed Enzo Maresca and I spoke before a ball was kicked about the fact that I thought that Noni Madueke could end up being one of Enzo Maresca's most important players this season I would still stand by that Raheem Sterling he seems to have taken well to this new system last night was a bit more of a mixed display from Sterling there was moments of brilliance in there. There was moments when he looked like the most important player when it comes to who can get us a goal, but there were also moments when he held on to the ball for too long and was dispossessed, and that was a trait we saw time in, time out last season. So I very much hope that that side of his game doesn't slip back into his game and we see better from him going forward. Now, maybe not to the same extent, but Melo Gusto, Enzo Fernandez, Kieran Dewsbury Hall have all looked decent in in this system, and there is a real part of me that feels like if we can get it right, especially the defence, we can see some lovely, lovely football from Chelsea Football Club this season. But the question is, how long does it take to get this right? And the wider question we do have is, do we have the right personnel to get this system right? Remember, there's been a few signings in there, but are they Enzo Maresca signings? I think we could definitely say Keen and Dewsbury Hall is, but who knows? Who knows? As I say, I really do think that we need Trevor Chalaba back in there. I think he'd suit this system quite well, you know. I really do think we would. I mean, it's just a, it's just a shambles, isn't it, what they're doing with this at the minute. Sorry, guys, it is a little bit 
downbeat today, I suppose. We're going to have to see what comes out of that Inter Milan match. I may be there. I may not be there. It's my 30th birthday party the day before. So, to be honest, I'm probably going to be having a few drinks. And if I'm hungover, do I fancy going up there again? I know when I go to Stamford Bridge, I'm going to break the diet. And I'm probably going to have a beer. And I don't really want to be doing that at the minute. But at the same time, I haven't been to Stamford Bridge in a while. I am missing it. I am missing that match day buzz. And hopefully we'll see a little bit better from Chelsea Football Club. So let's stick a pin in that one and we'll see. I am going to be in the studio with the big dog, Joshua Veste, on Friday. Will we? Will we? We will release a video on Friday and that will be the Inter Milan preview. We're also going to release a general video on pre-season and who has impressed in pre-season, who we feel could be moving on. After preseason, we're also going to do another video where I give what I believe is the best Enzo Maresca starting Chelsea lineup for this season. But apart from that, if there's anything else you want us to cover, anything else you want me to speak about, anything else you want to hear me and Josh chat about, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much to making it around for the end of another video. If you are not already, please subscribe. It would be brilliant to hit that 100k mark today. Whether it happens or not, I'm not too sure, but I'll put my hands together and pray that it does. People, thank you very much and I will see you all in the next one.